I remember Brother Andrew Romine was preaching. Mm, yes. He's preaching, he's preaching the message, uh, Don't Kill the Messenger. Wow. He was talking about the importance of the man of God in your life. And I, re I remember exactly where it was. And when people say, I can take you right to the spot where I, I, I can literally, I could show you right where it was that I fell on my face and I promised God that I was going to not just give my life to the ministry, but I was going to have a special call in my heart for youth ministry and for students. And throughout all, no matter what I felt God leading me towards, I've always felt that pull, that call, that earnestness for youth ministry. And, you know, I think at that time in my life, I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm like six, four and I'm 14 years old. I can play professional <laughs> basketball, you know, I, at least in my mind, I can play professional basketball. You know, I, I could I could do this. I could do that. Um, but that was the moment where it became abundantly clear. No, this is what God has for me in my life. Right. Right. And I, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be comfortable. I'm not going to be satisfied is probably a better word for it until I get to the point where I'm doing what God has commanded me to do. Yes. So though I was born into the church, um, you know, in my later teenage years, I, I think as a lot of people can identify with, I made some some decisions that pulled me away from that and uh, put myself and pulled other people into relationships that, that pulled me away from that initial calling that I had felt so strongly about. Mm -hmm. And I had to come to a point where I found my way back to that altar that I had made with God about yes. giving my life at whatever cost. Wow. Um, and, and actually, I I, th I I mean, you know, we've known each other for years. We've grown up going to camp together. And yeah. The, the chance that we had to spend as roommates at IBC. Yes. Uh, there, there were times where I think that I had gotten so caught up in the cycle of knowing what I was supposed to do mm. that I took for granted that that was going to suffice as my relationship with God. Right, right. But just going to church and just doing what you're supposed to do isn't a replacement or a substitute for your relationship with God. And so I had allowed myself to think, oh, I'm at Bible college. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm doing what God has told me to do. But I was allowing myself to be pulled into things and, and throwing myself into things that God had never intended for me to be a part of. And I had to go through a very abrupt and aggressive course correction mm -hmm. because I had, I had decided to go my own way, even in the middle of, of Bible college. I think that that's one of the things that I had to learn was that just being at IBC was not going to fix me. Mm. I, I had decided to go this direction. And no matter where my location was, no matter where I was positioned, it, it doesn't automatically mean my heart is right. Right, right. So I, I went through that abrupt and direct uh, course correction. Um, and, and I thank God for a loving pastor. I thank God for uh, a loving campus pastor, Brother Jason Gallion at the time. He, it, was, it was nothing but love when he told me, he sat me down and he said, look, you, you made mistakes. You, you've done, you've, you haven't wrecked your life, but you have definitely got off course. And so that love from mm -hmm. him, that love from my pastor, Pastor Tom Dibble in Waterbury, my, the, the love I felt from my parents, it is what allowed me. They were, they were firm. There was no, there was no, uh, wondering what it, what they were trying to say. They were firm right. what right. they were saying. But that love was what allowed me to come to the point was, my goodness, my relationship with God is completely reliant on me. Yes. I, I might have grown up in an incredible parent home that they went to church. They, they taught the word. I read, made me read my Bible every day, made sure I was in church. But that is just the beginning of the relationship. That's the foundation. Yes. It's up to me to build what that relationship with God looks like. So sorry, I, I, I apologize if I... No, I, no, no, that's not... Listen, man, this is great because at the end, I, really what's going on here, everyone listening, this this is a blessing to them to hear because there's so many people out there um, 
DJ that that I know that we don't know personally, but within our apostolic community that are either struggling to push through, to push forward. And I think there are a couple key things that I just want to take a moment to talk about that you said yeah. that I think is important. The love that you received from Brother Galley and from Brother mm -hmm. from Brother Tom Dibble, uh, your pastor at time in Waterbury, who's still the pastor there, but um, mm -hmm. and we'll get to later. You're you're currently serving at a different church today, working with the youth. So and we'll get to that a little bit later. But the the points of the love that you felt from them, I think was also part it sounds like part of a deciding factor where if it played differently if it was a completely different reaction what if you weren't here right now right what was that that could be a high possibility absolutely and the it was it was incredible to me yeah that he was able to that my pastor was able to sit me down and have one of the most pointed conversations with me and it was never in question to him whether God still had his hand on my life. Like I had made the biggest mistake that I'd ever made in my entire life. I had allowed myself to make decisions that were directly contrary to what God had called me to do. Mm -hmm. But he never once made me question if God still wanted to use me. Right. And, and he said to me, he said, you know what, DJ, I, I, I knew that he loved me. I, that was never in question. I knew that he loved me. He said, you know what, DJ? Do you think that God knows everything? And I said, of course. Like, you know, he's God. Yeah. And he said, okay, so if God knows everything, then he knew that you were going to come to this point in your life. Mm. He knew that you were going to make the mistakes that you made. Right. He knew that you were going to do what you did, but he still called you. Amen. And... I, I mean, this is going on, it's it's knocking on the door of 10 years later. Right. And, and I still remember that conversation that we had. And so just that impact, it left lasting fingerprints on my life, that, that firmness and that love that he showed. Because like you said, it very well could have gone different. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching the show today. If you enjoyed it, make sure to follow us and subscribe so you can stay up to date with the newest episodes and follow us on all social media platforms. So check out the links below.